Uh, let me just tell you what happened. We started off slow just now, and the reason for it, I have a guest and didn't know it. Well, I knew I had one, but I thought he was Skyped. And then, uh, so he walks in, and my producer uh, is slow. I don't know what's wrong. And then he let Travis take over. J James, come here for a minute. Get James in here. So the people know what's going on. And so that's why, and the guests are wondering what the hell happening. The show is not going to, Joel has to play music. And James let Travis, and Travis just brought the guests into the studio. I didn't know it. Amazing. So this is the producer, James. Hi. Of the Hate Report. <laughs> He's also the host of the Hate Report. The Hate Report. So James told me this morning I have a meeting that we had a guest. And, I'm like, and his name is uh, Slightly Offensive. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And so I'm thinking it's Skype. And so when you guys walking in, I'm like, what the world going on, right? And so Travis brought you guys in right at the end of the show, which is not normal the way we do it. And James is too weak to stop Travis. Tell him, take him from there. So uh, it's not that I'm too weak. It's we were ready to have him have bring him in because we needed to test it. And so, like, I was a little surprised that normally I would Why have Why you let Travis with... take over, though? Because he's the one who booked the guests. But he doesn't take over the show. But he wasn't really, he wasn't... He took yeah, over he, this morning. <laughs> he kind of took over a no, little bit. No, he took over. Well, he's, he's an intern, and he's used to bringing on guests on the Fallen State. And he's so, not, like, this he's, is not the Fallen State. I know, but he's not used to this, so I haven't trained him on but how to... But why did to, you stop him? Because it was you say, ready. hey, Travis, stop it now. <laughs> you can't just... Yes, you can. Well, I can, are but... Are you I, beta or are you alpha? I'm Ooh. not... I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> but the problem is so that... So slightly we were, offensive. Are you beta or alpha? <laughs> well, I would say that if I was in the same position, I probably would have stopped someone who was under me from, from coming on the show, but... Luckily, I mean, the problem is those when, when you have another alpha male you're trying to bring on, he probably knew about your producer being a beta, so he brought me in to sort of compensate last minute. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like I'm shocked that you didn't know that it was in studio, to be I honest. I did not. I was thinking it was Skype. Because I was telling, Joel knew. And I, had, like, kind of repeatedly t said. You knew Joel? Yeah. Uh, and so what would happen in uh, Mr. Slightly Offensive, so when the show was sitting, was coming on just now, yeah. I'm out, it's out in the big out room there yelling at them. Like, <laughs> what's going on? Cause I like order. I like to know what's going to happen. Of right? course. So I'm out there yelling at them. And then they said, well, he wants to wear his shades. I'm like, why? No. And, and um, what's the other boy's name? Travis. Travis told you, oh, yeah, you can wear them. I'm like, no. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, you know, it is amazing, but what do you think about my shades? I mean, you hate them, you love them, but, I mean, you want me to take them off? Yeah, because yeah. we can't see you. Well, yeah, but that's part of the mis that's part of the mystery of it. Oh, I usually, that's I, usually, I didn't recognize them I usually them always wear my shades, shades in, in, yeah, in, every, in everything. All right, go ahead, then. That's usually, like, it's kind of like color All right, that's your thing, then, I understand. Yes. All right. Like Because everybody got the thing, you know? Yes, they're wearing the shades everywhere, indoors, outdoors. It's just part of part of the look. So were you wondering why the show had started? Music just playing? Yeah, I was I was confused, but I mean, I know this crazy world, right? It's a fallen state, so <laughs> this is Jesse Lee Peterson. You never know what you're going to That's right. run into, ever. That's right. So, thank you. Done with me? Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> that was a great cameo. Awesome, man. Thank you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I have in studio Elijah Schaefer, uh, host and owner of Slightly Offensive, an independent media platform. And uh, so before I get to this soundbite where you were assaulted uh, by Black Lives Matter and other Trump haters, tell us a little bit about you, what you're doing, why you're doing it. Okay, you know, I, I honestly am out in the world trying to talk to people to allow them to just speak freely and I'm trying to give them a platform yeah. because what I've been finding is that when you have a platform, that's where you allow your ideas to come out and to be expressed. But as I give people a platform, I realize very quickly and they begin to understand and feel very stupid that they don't really know what they believe and what they express. Now, while a lot of people um, are doing similar things, one thing that we're trying to do is go to places where other people are afraid to go yes. and do it with boldness and with strength because that's we right. know 
we know where we're coming from in our platform. We understand what the truth is. We believe in absolutes. And so we're going in basically to areas that would typically be seen as too dangerous for the truth yes. to expose the darkness where it most necessarily needs to be exposed. And so how old are you? I'm 25. That's amazing, man. I'm impressed already. So you, what made you, being a white guy and, and a lot of, I see a change happening now where white people, especially young white guys such as yourself, are not afraid to stand up with truth. Are you walking down the road one day and you decide, you know what, I'm not going to take this anymore? Yeah, you know, I, I think after going through a full college education and being in countless classes where they would tell me, well, you can't speak because you're white privileged. Yeah. And I was recognizing that I grew up in a poor home. My dad's a pastor. Um, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I worked really hard. My older siblings didn't go to college. I, I tried so hard to go to school. I went through the program and I realized that the whole education system is pretty much just a bogus lie now. Yes. And, and it's just an anti-white, anti-American uh, technically even anti-intellectual environment that is promoting a generation of, of blind sheep. And I was getting pretty ticked off in general, walking around realizing that most of my counterparts are just accepting what people yes. are telling them. And I decided, you know what, I want to go out and I want to add my voice. Actually, after going to a dinner with Ben Shapiro, he actually said uh, to, to all of us there, if you have a platform or an ability to get your voice out there, do it. The, voice, the, the world needs more voices in the right direction, not less. And that was my catalyst. That's amazing. Congra congratulations, man. Dope. And so are you called white nationalists uh, and Nazi and all those names? Are you being called those names? Yeah, there's some, uh, in some posters that have been up recently around USC with my face saying I'm a known white nationalist. <laughs> and um, it's, really, it's really a blessing considering my roommate is black and I've dated mostly Mexican girls, and I've never been known to be a white nationalist, but the moment I came out as being a conservative and being, you know, pro, pro right values, yes. um, I guess my color of my skin made me a white nationalist. <laughs> so I thought it was an ideology, but apparently it's just, it's my lack of a tan. Um, <laughs> I really, so let me, which school did you go to, university? I went to Azusa Pacific University, so Christian school. That's a Christian school. I think that's the same one James went to. My producer went to that school. Oh, really? And so in that school, were they putting down white people? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Even, in a Christian school? Well, even the, th even the theology, like I, I took a modern, I took a, a bunch of my classes. I did a, my Bible college previously and took a, a lot of my seminary classes there as well. And, uh, you know, it was all like l uh, lesbian theology, black liberation theology, uh, Hispanic liberation theology, you know, modern semantics in the faith, you know, why Jesus... Could, I even had a, an essay about why Jesus might have been gay. Um, very, really? Oh, yeah. Weird weird school. This is at a Christian school. Yeah, whose motto is God first. Which God that is sometimes, <laughs> I wonder. And so you graduated from there? Yeah. Um, what was it? I mean, how would you handle that? Though? What was it like sitting through that for, for how many years? Four years? Three years? Yeah, no, it's four years. Four years. What was it like for you? Did you tell your parents what was happening? Yeah, I mean, I paid for it myself, but I, I knew oh, I, I knew that it was a bunch of crap when I was in a in a theology class. Uh, I actually studied molecular biology, but I did theology as well, so I kind of went between the, the things right. that are important, which is you know. And so uh, I remember that I said, um, you know, these were colored people, and I got like a D on the essay because I was told <laughs> that was racist that it's people of color, not colored people. Wow. So we have really lost it then if the Christian schools are allowing this to happen. Yeah. Oh, we've, I mean, believe it or not, Biola is following suit, which is, of course, those listening to Bio, like Bible Institute of Los Angeles. But Azusa Pacific, I mean, they have forums on diversity. They have a new diversity chancellor. And we all know diversity has nothing to do with diversity. It's like anti-white, anti-American values. Amazing. So live chat, spoiler alert, says most Christian schools in the United States have been subverted and corrupted. I know of a professor who was fired for opposing abortion at a Catholic school, E. Michael Jones. That's amazing. One other thing about your school, um, you were telling me during the break that they were teaching that human beings came from monkeys, apes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, there's a full, in order to even get your biology degree, which is what I have uh, emphasis in, like molecular uh, biology, you have to take a full course on evolutionary biology, and it's not even taught from the perspective of this is a idea. It's this is truth, and it's part of the core curriculum. 
And you said that at one, in one of your classes they told you to be quiet because of your white privilege? Yeah, I was told that my white privilege was showing. And then I was told that I, my opinion didn't matter because of my white privilege. And then I was told I needed to read a book on white privilege <laughs> before I could probably have another valid point. And who told you this? Um, th- the professor mixed with the whole students, and they were all in agreement. And I wanted to leave. I, I wanted to leave the class. I just stopped showing up to that class in general. Yeah. Still ended up passing with an A because it doesn't take much to get through college these days. And what class was this? This was actually modern theology. Really? Yes. And so what are you feeling and thinking or thinking and feeling why this is being said to you? You're sitting there thinking what while under attack? I was thinking, you know, it was only white people telling me this, of course, because, I mean, the class was about half mixed of other races and then about half white, which is typical of a lot of Christian and private private universities, especially here in L.A. And it was only the young white girls and young white boys like, well, your privilege is showing. And then, of course, one guy says, well, I'm a gay male. I was like, OK, cool. <laughs> I mean, that well, welcome. Welcome to intersectionality at its finest. Come join in the conversation. Discredit my opinion, and he's like, you know, you, you need to understand in this situation that you you're, you're raised to think a certain way, and he's trying to discredit this and think, isn't this a theology class? Isn't it the study of God, not the study of BS? But apparently, to them, you know, there's nothing and, sacred. And they still pass you in that class? Uh, yes, but I struggled. I mean. I struggled a bit. I had to have a lot of fights with the teacher, a lot of arguing oh. back and forth, try to get credit back for points, for questions, just because I disagreed with her opinions. And when you would tell your father and mother about what was happening at the school, what would they say? You know what? My dad being a pastor told me it's good for you to be challenged on your beliefs. But of course, I think they were kind of disappointed because they were hoping I was going to get a more of a solid Christian biblical education. And it turned into more of just leftist progressive ideology masked with God's name in front of it. Why didn't they pull you out? Well, because I'm, I'm a grown man, and I, I, I enrolled myself, and I paid for it myself. So they, I like that part. Yeah, so they, 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 they couldn't really have as much influence. And plus, I felt like God really told me to be there. And maybe part of that was because I realized that you can't trust in the institutions of men to, yeah. to change the country. you got to trust in God in the end. And so your mission now is to do what? My mission now is to bring the truth, to expose the truth, and to do it in a way that attracts young people because it's high energy, uh, it's, it's edgy, it's fun, but it lets people know that the world is, is not only crazy, but it can be influenced for the better. So the young man that came with you, his, his name is Blackest. Black <laughs> offensive. Black offensive. What's his Slightly name? black. No, oh, yeah. his name is Black Mike, but Mike is oh, spelled black M-I-C, Mike. M-I-C, like a microphone. He's a part of what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, he's a part of his own thing, but but we're roommates out here, so. Oh, I see. Yeah. And bl- his name, is he conservative kind of a guy as well? Oh, super. I mean, he's, you know, he has a new show coming out where he's basically sitting down with, with a lot of other different black people um, from left to right wing policies and debating them. He's been featured on Daily Wire and stuff. He's up and coming, but. Black Mike. Yeah. Okay. And guy. so, slightly offensive um, was um, assaulted by uh, Black Lives Matter and anti-Trump, anti-Trumpers. Here's the sound bite from that. People. We get that you brought your time yeah. minority, but that doesn't mean you get to say whatever you want. I'm not, I'm just asking questions. We're here to interview and ask people questions about what they're out here protesting. Are you for Black Lives Matter? No. Are you for Free Palestine? No. What? We're the news. Okay, stop. Can you please calm down? Calm down! You, I use it! Get out of my face! What's up? What you gonna do? Get out of my face! We're deep in here! We're deep right here! Get out of my face! Get out of my face! Hey! Get out of my face! Hey! Oh! Oh! That's amazing! Yeah, well, actually four times in one month, my team's completely either been jumped or assaulted physically pretty harshly just while asking people questions about basically a controversy like this. What are you protesting for? That's, I mean, that's deep. That, that, nothing is deeper than that, and that definitely advocates violence. I have nothing but respect for you. Sorry for the mess up this morning, but I'm glad we made it through it. <laughs> no worries. Because we need young men to start standing up, and especially young white men, but all men of God, uh, because white men is under attack. You're the most hated species on this side of heaven. Straight, white, conservative, Christian men of power 
are the most hated species. And the reason for that, if they can get rid of you, then they can turn America into a socialist society. And so you hate it. And you represent Christ, and they hate the Christ. They hate the sons of God. That's an amazing thing. So when this fight was going on, this was happening. Uh, this is in Hollywood, right? Yeah. This fight here. Joel, we show that because I, I wasn't where you were playing it. So you were in Hollywood, and who were you fighting with? Um, okay, so these are just some guys. We, I was with uh, Joy Villa. Do you know who Joy Villa is? No. Joy Villa, she's famous for wearing the MAGA dress to the Grammys. She's like a spokesperson. Oh, um, okay. You know, so she's she's. Oh, awesome. yeah, I know. Who you, she's out of Florida somewhere, right? Well, she's here right now. But, oh, okay. yeah, but she, she's dope. And we did an ex experiment where we went out to the Trump star wearing Make America Great Again gear, and we sung the national anthem at the star. Oh, okay. And right as after we got done singing that, we showed up with a Marine and different people we were very, to inspire patriotism. Right on. And um, people booed us at the end of singing the national anthem. That's where our country's at. And people are like, Trump doesn't deserve that. I, I go, well, the national anthem predates his presidency. Yes. And by the way, the presidency is not Donald Trump. The presidency is the presidency. It's That's an office right. that he holds. I love the guy myself, but at the same time, you know, being an American has is little to do with Trump actually. He is the great white hope. Did you know that? I, I call him the great white hope. Yeah, and I'm I'm I I would agree with that, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a great white hope for the country and especially for black folks, because otherwise not all, not all, not all. It's over for black Americans. And now he has something like thirty percent of the support from black community. They're starting to wake up. This man is not only making America great. He's making the world great again, and I'm so thankful. And so you up there in Hollywood, you got? Do you have uh, like bodyguards with you or something? Yeah. So I have. I usually have about when I go to when I go to rallies, I have about four bodyguards with me that they go with me around. I'm sure they, they've worked with you too, uh, Antonio Foreman and some of those guys. Oh yes. yeah, they're cool right. guys. They are. Of, of course, I mean, they protected you, but they get called white supremacists. Of course, racists, everything. Right. I, and it made me laugh because they they were protecting some some Jewish people, some trans people, black people. But you know, if at this point it doesn't matter who you are, you just get labeled a racist. Yes. Uh, so they're really helpful. And then I also have a, this guy named Hoff, Tony Hoff. He's a, he's an ex marine who you actually see in the Hollywood video, sort of just pump punch. Let me it see out. it again, Joel. He's awesome. He's a, he's actually actually a boxer. Uh, that's amazing. He beat up four. <laughs> he beat up four four guys actually. Isn't that something? Fighting for freedom against the enemies of America. And uh, is that Fort Lord with you? Is what is it? it? The, the yeah, that's Folklore. You know him. Folklore, he's, he's, done, yeah. he's done work with you guys, he's too. He's excellent. He's awesome. He's amazing. I, I would agree. He's, his he work is, is more than a notion. He's like 10 people's jobs in one person. Yes. And <laughs> he is. He does his color correcting, sound mixing, editing, everything. Everything. It, it's amazing, too, because when we've gone out with them, they do, you know, they get this footage, they shoot things, and then when they come back, and like, where did this come from? They really <laughs> are good at what they do. Yeah, I would agree. It's just two of them, I think. Yeah, just Claudio, I think Claudio and, and, and Steven, and they're just, they just kill it. They I absolutely, know. they blaze it out, because two strong men with determination can do the job of 10 weak men in our country today. I'm going to hold you over since we had a bad start. Yeah, no No, worries. that was really a good start. Yeah. <laughs> My staff would never do that again. I believe I believe they're they going to do will. it the right way. How are you going to run a show if you don't know what's going on? Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How can people uh, get in contact with you or check out what you're doing? Yeah, so if you want to check out a lot of our videos, uh, we've been around for about four months now. We've produced over 30 videos in four months. We're working tirelessly, and you could go to youtube.com slash slightly offensive. So it's just spelled normally, youtube.com slash slightly offensive, or you can go to truthisoffensive.com, which is the reality that truthisoffensive.com, yeah. and you can connect with us on there, send us a message. Also find us on uh, Instagram or Twitter at official slightly offensive, or you could just check me out, too, and add me on any one of the social media, just Elijah Schaefer, my full name, uh, and uh, connect and let me know what, what your thoughts are. And you're 25 years old. Yes, sir. You were telling me during the break that the left is trying to associate you with the KKK? Yes. Tell us about that. Okay, yeah. So basically what happened is uh, the first about, about eight weeks into or about six to eight weeks into this, um, I went to a march. 
Um, I still don't know what it was about, but there was this one week <laughs> where there was about six marches in a row. And it's funny, I actually even introed the video. I was like, hey, guys, I'm here at another march. I don't know what it is, but I know people are angry at Donald Trump. <laughs> and it was in Spanish, and I, I didn't know what it Hola. was. Hola! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, el presidente de Trump is sí, muy sí. mal. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, they're like, you know, like I, I went in there to to jump in, and um, some people from some liberal. I won't don't want to don't want to dox the the, the right. people because I don't want to do to them what they do to me. You yeah. know, I don't want to I don't want to pay back evil with with evil. I want right. to pay back with good. But they went ahead and they tweeted my picture. Now I'm a white guy. I I traditionally go back and forth between blonde and brown hair because I just. I'm a mutt and, you know, my hair, whatever. Right. So, uh, so I go bef- between it and they start posting, hey, who is this guy? Steve, people start tweeting back. He's part of the alt-right. He's, he's part of the KKK. Um, this guy is, is a white supremacist. I don't know where they got that from. They they got, got it. it doesn't have to be true. They just make up lies in order to intimidate you so you stop doing what you're doing. Right. And, you know, and that's why that was the first time I got assaulted. That was before I had security. And um, one of the guys actually came up and smacked me on the head, like literally whacked me with a drumstick, which actually wow. hurt pretty bad. I mean, that's, that's definitely assault. They spit in my face. So they dr- pushed me. When you say drumstick, it was a chicken leg? No, like, yeah, like an actual drum. <laughs> <laughs> he threw that fried chicken right at my face. <laughs> It was extra crispy too, so I got some of the seasoning on my lip. Was it really chicken? It was delicious pain. No, it was oh. an actual. You, oh. they, they had um. So they they were smart. So what they did is they had a marching band come, and in order oh. to get who they they call me an agitator or a, or a, a you know confrontational journalist or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I just. I just call myself an influencer, but I, yeah. I went in there and what they do is this new crazy thing where they have the band playing and they play really loudly and they surround you so the police can't see you and can't hear you and then they uh, assault you in the middle of it. Amazing. I got to ask you this. <laughs> um, so let me tell you this. You, you pay for your own college education? Yes. And what made you decide to do that? Uh, stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Attending a private school, I still owe some money, and I, I bought into the lie of of education. Right, I bought into the lie. But I I'm respect a, you for paying for it, even though it's crazy to go to a liberal school. I think parents should make their children pay for their own education. They appreciate it more. Yes, I, I got really good. I almost got, I got like a three point nine. Yeah, and uh, you know, got opportunities to get into PhD programs, medical school, and then I realized. You know what? The world doesn't need more doctors. The world doesn't need more professors. The world needs more underground media people going out and exposing. Yes, exactly. So we have a, a picture of a, of a drumstick. Yeah. Let's see it. Oh, that's what they hit you with, something like that. That doesn't look like a chicken leg to me. <laughs> that does not look like a chicken. It doesn't even look delicious. I wouldn't fry that thing. But they hit you with something like that. Yes, yeah, smacked me right on the head. Amazing. Didn't feel good, but it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. They're, they're weak guys. So, silent, offensive. I need you to answer one quick question for me. Yes. Slight, I mean, slightly, slightly, not silent. You're anything but silent. No, not silent. Slightly offensive. Um, I read, and I'm just not seeing this, you asked David Hogg of March <laughs> for Our Lives <laughs> about gun control, and his handler, handlers kicked you out of the area. Yes. Tell us quickly about that. Okay, so there was a March for Our Lives event. We found out David Hogg was going to be in the area. The NRA tipped us off and told us he was going to be there. So we wanted to go in, and we were smart. They they made it a very closed-off event. They told us we couldn't go in. Um, so through some quick debating, we found a way to get ourselves in with Folklore Americana to get the camera. Of course, we didn't wear any slightly offensive tagging because yeah. we know that the left— doesn't have a platform to really to really defend their ideas. We get in there, they give us one rule, you cannot talk to the Parkland students. So I did the best thing, I went right over and found uh, the, the media director and said, hey, we are signed up for an interview at David Hogg. He goes, who are you with? And I go, oh, we're independent media. And um, it's a great it's a great tag, just we're independent yeah. media. He goes, when was your scheduling? And I was like, it was in 15 minutes. And he's like, oh, Come okay, on. cool. So, yeah, so let's get you over here. And so, because, I mean, at this point, if we want to, we, we're, we're journalists. What happened to real journalism? We want to find the truth. We want to really talk to people. Um, and we're not going to get blocked. So we get an interview with him, some Black Lives Matter people. So this event was for Black Lives Matter barbecue or something, right? It was it was something. Something who knows, like that. Who knows anymore, Jesse? Know. You don't even know. It's it's intersectionality. It's 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 for lesbians. <laughs> Some girl came up and said she was a a fat black lesbian, and everyone cheered. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. Ugh, like, 
And so they end up throwing you out. Yeah, just because I asked him to clear a conspiracy theory, I was really polite. And I said, hey, you know, were you at the school the day of the shooting? And they're like, that's enough. You're, you're done. And then he answers it, uses the F word. This is a man who wants wow. to run for Congress, saying the F word, getting angry at me. They grab my whole crew and kick us out mid-interview. Amazing. Well, be, be careful. But uh, and it doesn't matter what they call you because you're white. They're just trying to stop you. Do not give in to intimidation, but be careful. It's an honor to meet you. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. You too. Amazing.